this is your video introduction to ELR 2.5, which is all about this concept called conservation of momentum. Now last week we learned about how momentum is calculated. Now we're going to start looking at, well, what happens when things crash into each other? What happens when something's momentum is changed because of a collision? So the first place that we're going to start is with a really simple premise, or like a thing that we're going to assume off the beginning. So we could prove this, but I need you to take the word for it that scientists have already gone through this a lot and um, found out that this is true. But all of the momentum before a crash happens is always going to be equal to all of the momentum after a crash happens. And that might seem a little bit crazy, but if you think about it with the Newton's cradle experiment that we saw yesterday, if you lifted up one marble and then let it slam into the rest, one marble came out the other side. So when the momentum started with just one going to the right, it ended with just one going to the right. So hopefully this concept should at least feel a little bit intuitive. Um, when you're thinking about like vehicles crashing into each other, like two cars, it's a little harder to imagine, but it, the physics is still the same. So if we can start with this principle, all the momentum before is equal to all the momentum after, we can kind of break that up a little bit more and say, well, before the crash, if let's say we have two objects that are going to crash into each other, all of the momentum of the first object plus the second object, if I add those two things, well, that should be equal to all of the momentum for those same two objects after the crash. And if we break this up a little bit further, imagine it like this. We're going to work on an example of, let's, let's pretend there's this green car carrying some mass in it, and it's driving to the right. And it's going to get this big brick dropped on top of it, and it's going to keep going. But hopefully you can imagine that if you drop a brick onto a car, it's going to have to slow down. And the question is going to be, well, how much did it have to slow down if momentum was conserved, if all the momentum for these two objects is still equal for them after the, the collision? And a collision in this sense is just this thing got dropped on that thing. So a collision isn't necessarily always like a fatal crash at high speeds or anything like that. So let's break this up a little bit. I've got my same picture up at the top, and you should have this sketched on your notes too. If you need to pause the video to do that, please do so. But what we're going to say is we're going to start with some assumptions. Let's just say that this car, I'm going to use all green for the car. Let's say the car is 120 kilograms, so a pretty hefty car, and it's moving at 6 meters per second. And this brick, let's say it's just dangling there right now, not moving at all, 0 meters per second, and it's also got some mass to it, 25 kilograms. That's all the information that we know in order to answer this blue question. How fast are the two objects going after the brick is dropped on the car? So they're going to be traveling together after they make this collision. So here's what we're going to do. In order to do this for all of the questions that we're going to solve in this ELR, I'm going to ask you to set up a table, just like this one that's on your screen. We're going to have all of the items listed on the left, and there are always only going to be two in this class. We're going to have the first one, I'm going to use my car, and the second one, I'm going to use my brick. And then we're also going to have a third row for the total. And everything on the left is going to be the before side, and then everything on the right is going to represent the after side. So this will help us to keep track of our numbers, help us to avoid any mistakes as we're calculating, and hopefully you'll see right away the benefits of this table if you don't already. But we're going to use these tables all the time. So here we go. We already know from last week that momentum, we use a P for some reason, is equal to mass times velocity. So if we know this equation, we can start plugging in things for both sides of the before and after in order to figure out what this velocity is that we're trying to solve for at the very end. So let's start with the green car before. We know a lot about the green car before. In fact, we know the mass and we know the velocity. So we can already figure out the momentum of the car before. It's just 120, it's mass times 6, it's velocity. Throw that into your calculator and you get 720 kilogram meters per second. We also know enough about the brick to figure out before. Since it's dangling there with no velocity, this math is pretty easy, but it's 25 for its mass times 0 of its velocity, and we're going to get 0 for its momentum. So again, the premise that we're operating from is all the before momentum has to be added together. So it's just 720, that's the momentum for the car, plus zero, the momentum for the brick, that equals 720. Now we have to go to the after side, and this is the part that might seem a little bit more confusing. 
But since these two objects were like stuck together, they were traveling together after the collision, we can make an assumption. We can assume that the brick and car are moving together as one object now. So instead of having to do object one plus object two, which you could do, it would make your math a little bit more complicated, but you could do it that way. We're gonna just say, let's say it's all just one object. So all the after momentum is this car with the bricks on it. So to do that, we know the mass of the car and the mass of the brick. If we add these two things together, that's the total mass. Since we didn't add or subtract anything, it's just they're stuck together now. So the mass is now 145, but we don't know the velocity. So we're gonna leave it as a V. So our after momentum, P, is equal to 145, because we've added the car plus the brick, times velocity, because that's how you do momentum, mass times velocity. But we don't know V, so we're just going to leave it as a variable, V. But when you multiply 145 times V, we're going to get this right here, 145 Vs. So since we only have the one object, this is our whole after momentum, 145 V. So now here, check this out. We've got the total momentum before is 720. We just figured out the total momentum after is this 145 Vs. But remember, we know that these two things have to be equal. So if we set 720 equal to 145 V, we can solve this V part. That's what we're trying to solve for. So 720 equals 145 V. Now some algebra kicks in. In order to solve for V, we have to divide both sides by this 145 in order to get V by itself. Since they're multiplied together, we have to divide to get rid of it. So if you divide both sides by 145, You'll punch that into your calculator and you find out that the car is moving at 4.97 meters per second. Now let's check to just make sure that this makes sense. If it started at 6 meters per second and this brick was just hanging there, it does kind of make sense that if you drop this relatively light brick on top of it, that its velocity should be reduced, and it was, by almost one, well, a little bit more than 1 meter per second.